Here. And we've got a presentation today called Complex Exposure Settings. And so specifically, we're going to do two math examples. And for each math example, I'll show you two ways to do it. Okay, I'm trying to buy some time. Here we go. So uh, complex exposure settings. One method is called the rank and sum method. It is quick and dirty. It's a nice cheat, um, but you may need to do it both ways. You may use the rank and sum method first and then do it the correct way second um, or compare your answers. So the more precise method, I'll show you after showing you the rank and sum method. So example one, using the rank and sum method. So they give you a question that says, which following sets of factors would result in the greatest radiographic density or the greatest exposure to the IR? And they could ask least exposure to the IR or uh, lowest radiographic density. Step one is you're gonna calculate the mass. So you're gonna take 100 MA times 400 milliseconds and adjust that, uh, divide that by a thousand because you don't want milliamp milliseconds, you want milliamp seconds. And you'll collect, you, you'll collect, you'll calculate all your masses. Step two is we're gonna go through each of these factors, the KVP factor, the grid factor, those are the two that vary in this example. And we'll go through it and we'll rank it as which condition will give us the greatest density. So, um, First, we'll rank the masses. 80 is the highest mass, so it would be uh, ranked 1, the greatest density. 40 is the second most highest. There's another 40. 18.8 is the third most highest, and 10 is the fourth most highest. Then we'll go on to our KVPs. It looks like 93 is our highest. That would give us the greatest mass, the greatest density. Then we've got an 81, and then we've got two of these 70s and 160. And then we'll go through the grids. No grid would give me the greatest density. Uh, the 4 to 1 grid would give me the next greatest because it's the, the lightest, the, the, the easiest, the lowest grid factor. Then the 6 to 1, then the 8 to 1, then the 16 to 1. So we ranked all our factors. Now we're going to sum them up. So for row A, I take 2 plus 3 plus 1, it equals 6. For condition set B, I get an 8. For condition set C, I get an 8. Condition set D, I get a 9. And condition set E, I get a 9. Okay, so that means... Row A, condition set A, gave me my lowest number, um, so that's going to give me the highest density. It's ranked number one in all these factors for low density. So the low sum is the condition with the greatest density because we ranked them from greatest density to least density. All right, the real way to do this problem is the same beginning, first calculate the masses, but then the next step would be we would pick a, a value. We'd say, all right, let's pick 93, and we'll scale the mass to an equivalent mass of what that density would be. Okay, and remember, we're going to use the 15% rule. So we've got 60, 60 and a 15% step would get me to like 70. 70 and a 15% step would get me to an 81. 81 and a 15% step would get me to 93. Those are my values out here. So it's very easy to use the 15% rule. So 70 kVp get with 40 mass would be the same as 80 kVp, 15% up with 20 mass. And it would give me the same as 93 kVp with 10 mass. So I can cut the mass by in a quarter to do two 15% steps up. With 60 at 40, I'm going to do three steps up of 15%, so it's going to be an eight times. So 60 with 40 mass is the same darkness as 70 with 20 mass, which is the same as 81 with 10 mass, or 93 with five. 81 is just one 15% step away from 93, so the mass just cuts in half to say what would be the equivalent radiographic density at that point. 93 stays the same, 10 mass, and 70 here, well, I'm going to cut it by a quarter because I have to do two 15% steps. Now, if the question did ask for the highest patient dose or lowest patient dose, we wouldn't use the 15% rule. We would actually just do the ratio of the KVP squared. And, but that's even further complicated. All right, so now we're going to do, we're going to take the, we've got all these equivalent masses if these conditions were at 93. And now we're going to scale them all as if there were, they were all with no grid. So the no, and we need our grid factors to do this and our formula, grid factor formula. 
So 10 mass with no grid is just like 10 mass with no grid. 5 mass with a 4 to 1 grid, which has a grid factor of 2, would give me the same darkness as 2 and a half mass with no grid. It's a grid factor of 2 to 1, so it's a mass of 2 to 1. It's half the mass. All right, so we do that for them all. 10 mass at 8 to 1 would be the same as 2 and a half mass with no grid because it's a 4 to 1 grid factor with the 8 to 1 grid. So we would scale our mass again so we can get to apples and apples and compare them directly. Now we're done. We can say condition A, 10 mass, would be the greatest density. Now remember when we ranked them, we had condition A had us the lowest number. So they agreed. But let's look at this. If, we wanted to, if the question asked us for the lowest density, these are kind of close together, these 8s and 9s. And uh, you can see that e, the lowest density would be B and D, and they don't differentiate. So if the rank and sum doesn't give you a clear winner, you've got to go back and analyze conditions. You don't have to analyze, you don't have to scale condition A. You might have to scale condition B, C, D, and E this proper way to really decide which one had the lowest density. Since this is highest, though, A is a clear winner, the rank and sum method is enough. So a lot of times you'll have to do the problems both ways. All right. Example two, or stop this video. I'm going to stop this video and do a different video for example two. Okay? Let's see how far along we are.